Today's episode of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mezzy Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com and Mt. Gox, M-T-G-O-X.com and BitPay, B-I-T-P-A-Y.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Bitcoin Show. This is episode 35, and I'm Bruce Wagner. And uh, joining us today, right here, live in the studio, is Andrew Lee, who, welcome. Welcome. (laughs) And Andrew is the uh, co-founder of Mt. Gox Live. So, welcome. You're you're right here local to New York, right? Yes, just recently. Recently? Where are you from before that? Um, Well, I lived in Connecticut for about one year, and before that, I was in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody knows what Mt. Gox is, mm-hmm. but what the heck is Mt. Gox Live? Mt. Gox Live is a, uh, it's a trading depth um, chart, basically, that allows you to see the price resistances, the open orders and the buy and sells, um, lets you see okay. trade history, uh, up-to-date live trade data. It basically keeps you updated on what's happening in the Bitcoin economy. So check, check out my screen and you can see I'm on Mt. Gox Live right now. And when I go to Mt. Gox Live right now, that, that's what it looks like. Um, nope, you're not seeing it. Oh, well, anyway, trust me, <laughs> it's like a big V and it shows you the spread. It shows you the, the uh, basically that's the order book, it, real time. That's why it, it's called exactly. live. Okay, so you see on the one side the, the order book um, orders, on the other side the... the uh, I guess the asks and the and the buys, right? Yes, the the the, the buys, bids, bids, bids are the on the left and the asks are on the. Okay. Right. And what's this green squiggly thing down the middle? That's the actual trades that occurred. And if you hover your mouse over each, mm-hmm. um, like the green line, mm-hmm. you can see, you know, the time oh. that it was traded and. Oh, the there's, actual trades. Yeah, there's also um, a thickness on that line as well, so mm-hmm. it shows you the volume of the trades that occurred at that oh. time as well. Wow, this is cool. And so we, we, knew, we announced and we, we all uh, know probably by now that uh, Mt. Gox uh, acquired Mt. Gox Live, mm-hmm. right? So is that the secret? You just create a website and a cool, really cool tool and call it Mt. Gox and they're just going to buy you? Is that, <laughs> <laughs> was that your plan from the beginning? <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. You know, it's all, it's all luck, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah coincidence. I think it's more than luck. You have to come up with something really, really valuable, mm-hmm. which you obviously have. And uh, the guys at Mt. Gox must have been really impressed. When, what was uh, your first contact like when, when uh, Mark called you up and said, hey, I like what you did? How did that <laughs> we go? actually were talking for quite a long time, so I can't even really remember how it first started. Mm, okay, cool, cool. Probably email. He's always into <laughs> email. <laughs> That's very cool. Okay, so, so Mt. Gox Live is a website. Now... Mount, and you're, you're a co-founder, mm-hmm. so you had a partner in this startup, yes. right? Yes. And, and the, but Mt. Gox Live then became uh, Mt. Gox Live app. Yes. Right? For Android? Yeah. So, so what happened was basically um, somewhere around May 26th, Steve De Prospero, who's also many people know as Coder, mm-hmm. he uh, wrote Mt. Gox Live, the website, mm-hmm. and he showed it to me, and we put it on one of our servers. And... We thought, wow, this is amazing. We need to keep making more services to help Bitcoin go up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that is slick. Um, so he developed the website. And so you developed the app then? Yes. Oh, okay. So you developed the app. Very cool. Um, why don't you see if you can bring it up here at um, uh, mountgoxlive.com slash mobile. So that mountgoxlive.com slash mobile is the actual page for the Mt. Gox Live mobile. So now you were just telling me a minute ago, that's how I know, Mt. Mm-hmm. Gox Live app has now been renamed just Mt. Gox Mobile. Exactly. Okay, cool. So that's, that's good, because I can't remember it. <laughs> Mt. Gox <laughs> lo- Mobile, I can remember. Um, and it's, it looks really slick. The, you can actually just download it here. Now, it's, it requires Android or iOS. Yes, the iOS, right. um, there's a lot of, I guess... Uh, desire for it, but right now we're still doing testing. It works on 
jailbroken iOS devices, which mm -hmm. are version 4.01, mm -hmm. but not with the most recent 4.3.3 or up. So on the iPhone and stuff, all the i thingies, you have to have iOS 4.01 and it has to be jailbroken. Exactly. So it's a little qualifiers there. But Android can just be 2.1 or better. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. there is, I, I, I'd like to mention so nobody is startled, there is an issue with Android 2.1 and their uh, root, their trusted root SSL certificates. So there's actually a problem with 2.1. Mm. So in hindsight, actually, we should limit 2. it to 2.2 plus. Yeah. 2.2 plus. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a typo. Mark that up. We'll fix it. <laughs> All right. But um, basically, a new Android phone. So that's really slick. Now, um, you're also involved. Now, btc.to, tell us about that. Okay, so when we had our uh, mobile application and we thought, okay, so you want to send Bitcoins to a Bitcoin address. Mm -hmm. And then we were about to do that and it's so many characters that you have yeah. to enter, especially on a mobile phone and it's a nightmare. So we thought, okay, we need a Bitcoin address shortener. And so that's where btc.to came from. I remember, <laughs> I don't know, I might have told this story before, but I remember um, that one of the very first Bitcoin transactions I ever did. Mm -hmm. Some guy, I had, I had uh, put some US dollars into Mt. Gox and some guy you know, emailed me, whatever, and he wanted to meet, and he wanted to, he wanted to buy some Bitcoins. So we met at the coffee shop or whatever, and he's like, he hands me this little, like, it was literally like a piece of paper, like, like this, just torn off <laughs> like that, right? And he hands it to me, and he goes like that. And I'm like, what's this? Like, what is this, your business card? I'm like, what is this? And it was his Bitcoin address printed out like an eight point font. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do? We just like read it, type it in. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. And we both started laughing. I'm like, don't you have email? <laughs> but yes, all right. So I've often wondered about that. Um, the idea of a shortener is really smart. You can go uh, take, bring that up at btc.to over here. And basically it just looks like a, um, it's just a shortener, like any other shortener, right? Yes, but exactly. But the thing is, it has to be trusted, right? Because yes. so because I thought of this many times, and I'm mm -hmm. going, you got to trust this shortener. I mean, definitely, I can create my own shortener and make them all go to me, right? Mm -hmm. So, but this has got the uh, the and now now that you have been consumed, <laughs> bought up by Mt. Gox, so this is backed by the full faith and confidence of the United States government. I mean, uh, Mt. Gox, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's trusted because you guys host this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, can this site be hacked? Um, I'm not going to say that there exists any site that cannot be hacked. Right answer. That was a test. <laughs> <laughs> That's very smart. But we will hope it doesn't. Yeah, definitely. Okay, it's very secure. Um, is it hosted at the same place that where Mt. Gox site is? No, it's on a different server. A different server, okay. Yeah, for, for Mt. Gox safety reasons, of course. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I guess, in a, in a sense, the good thing is like mm -hmm. one transaction and you would know because it wouldn't go to the right place. Yeah. So you can actually put in your whole Bitcoin address here and then just click go and it's going to give you a little URL, a btc.to URL. Yeah, right. actually... Um, oh, so I can actually paste... Yeah, you could paste maybe this 1-2 address here and see what, how it reacts. Okay, let me see. I'm doing it on my notebook, but... Um, pasting it. Yeah. Okay, so I did it on my notebook, we can see right now, because, but anyway, but it, I get HTTP colon slash, slash btc.to slash one. Oh, that's the one, okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I was like, that's, I'm the first person to use it. <laughs> no, that's cool. So, uh, what, do you, what do you normally end up with, like a, like a three digits or six digits or, um, there you go. Yeah, it really yeah, depends one. on uh, how many um, addresses are in the database. So, it'll eventually keep getting longer. It's, mm -hmm. um. Each, I guess you call it slot or character position, mm -hmm. is uh, in base 36. So it, um, any character is allowed, basically. Anything from A to Z, 0 to 9. Okay. I noticed I put in a, I just changed the last letter, and it won't take it because it's obviously not a valid one. So that's good. You can't mm -hmm. accidentally put a bad one in. That's really clever, then. Yeah. Um, so like, what's it up to like now? Is it like 600 or 6,000? Sure. So it'll be probably roughly four digits or five digits or something like that. Yeah, we'll That's be very clever. We'll, we'll actually be um, releasing the uh, database so everybody can always check it every day, mm, nice. multiple times a day. Can I get a vanity URL? I want, I want btc.to slash Bruce. 
Yeah, that may be something that will come in the future. Probably sell it, right? <laughs> you never know. All right, that's very slick too. So, and it's good to know that it's backed by you guys. It's not just some random stranger who created this thing. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of that going on. So, um, all right. So back to the other thing. I want to see this. Uh, the uh, Malcox Mobile. It's malcoxlive.com slash mobile is the website. And yes. the app is called Malcox Mobile. And, um, I mean, <clears throat> I knew, we actually, you had called me like a while back. This mm -hmm. is before Malcox acquired, right? Yeah. And we And we wanted to talk about it and all that. I was very mm -hmm. interested... Um, but now, you know, I'm more interested than ever because I'm learning more about all this stuff and especially, especially exciting is the voucher thing, which mm -hmm. is just kind of like this, this new th system that Malcox set up and just like quietly just released it. Like, mm -hmm. there it is, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe they wanted to like have the user sh usership like grow gradually and make sure it worked really well before they like did this mass announcement. But I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? It does what? Oh my God, this is really, really cool. So, all right, so let's talk about the app. And I'll let you do some talking too. I will let you get a word in. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the app, so primarily for Android, anybody that has an Android phone, a new phone, 2.2 or better for mm -hmm. sure, can just go to the, the standard Android market. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And it's called Mt. Gox Mobile. They just do a search for Mt. Gox Mobile. How many stars does it have? Uh, right now it has four stars. At, like I was saying, before there were... Um, some issues with 2.1 and SSL mm. certificates. So there's a bunch of comments like, oh, mm. it's not working on my 2.1, my 2.1. There's always some haters, <laughs> always some haters, but you fix that out, mm -hmm. they'll fix that and then yeah, they'll definitely. go up and all. So, all right, that's cool. Now, the thing that is really interesting to me is that you, uh, what do you call it? You join it or uh, link it somehow to your Mt. Gox account? Oh yeah, so, um, what happens is when you first download the application, you cannot log in with your username and password for safety reasons. You can't. Yeah, instead what you have to do is actually have the website open on your phone, I mean on your computer, which means you may even need to use your YubiKey to log in as well. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you take the phone and right here you can see it says activation key. You mm -hmm. pair it up with the um, account and then that's how it gains access. You can revoke these, this access at any time too. Okay, so I'm not quite clear when about one thing. So, like, why why couldn't I just? I mean, why would it be bad if I launch the app that I just log in with my user ID and password? Like, I could do that from the web browser on the phone. Yeah. So, so what happens is, um, well, there's so many scenarios, I guess, but some that come to the top of my mind for one is after. Um, after people learned how to have more secure and stronger passwords, mm -hmm. these passwords became incredibly long. Yeah, like so, a Bitcoin address. Yeah, exactly. So oh, that that's was it. Use a Bitcoin address as your password. <laughs> no, maybe not. I'm, I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so for one, it makes logging in easier. But at the same time, security is of utmost importance. Right. So we're, we're implementing security features with this pairing that should be you know, industry mm -hmm. standard. So. Yeah. So that's the bottom line is it's more secure. Mm -hmm. Because if you just log in with your ID and pa or your login and password on the browser, then you're going to have the full access to it. And you can't, if, if you have it secured with a YubiKey, which we recommend, mm -hmm, definitely. of course, um, mm -hmm. then of course you can't do that from any. any. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, that's another kind of a side issue. But if I have my Mt. Gox account secured with a YubiKey, mm -hmm. And an Android phone, I, I, there is a USB kind of a connector. Is it possible somehow that, that you could, the device could read the uh, YubiKey on an Android phone? Um, I'm not quite sure if that's possible now, but I'd imagine that there's nothing that's impossible in the yeah, world right? after all, right? So. I think that would be a really good idea. Mm -hmm. If there's some, maybe some manufacturer will make a USB interface for Android mm -hmm. and then it could become compatible and just be seen it sees it as a keyboard, right? Definitely. So maybe there's some app situation for Android where you could you could actually see it as a USB keyboard. Mm -hmm. And if that were the case, then maybe you could actually use a UB key on an Android phone. That would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, in the meantime, the this app gives you uh, almost as good of security because you have to pair it with the with the client, right? Mm -hmm. So um, show let's see the, the what the app looks like when you um, when you bring it up. Now, is this on an iPhone, the, um, the first slide there, Ed, um, where, where you see the actual, oh, um, that's the website. Let's go to the first slide, actually. The first slide, the image of the icons 
on the on the actual phone. There we go. So right there in the center, you'll see the uh, the launch. Is that an iPhone? That's an Android, of course. Right? Oh yeah. So oh. that's um that's the uh, MIUI. It's a it's a custom Android ROM. You can get it at MIUI.us. Oh okay. So that's okay. But the then the Mt. Gox Live, or actually it's called Mt. Gox Mobile app, is the icon. The launch mm -hmm. icon's right there. Okay. Next. <laughs> We'll go through this quick slideshow. So this, these three images represent what? Okay, so the first screen represents the first screen that you would see when you actually download and open the application. Mm -hmm. The second one is the result after you've either A, entered the, um, the pairing key, or B, scanned it with the QR code reader. The and key. then the third screen is where you'd enter a PIN number so that it can actually encrypt using AES encryption the secret key so that you know no one can steal the secret key for from you. Okay, so let me translate a little bit down <laughs> and technical. So I think what you're saying <laughs> is that um, you launch the app and you have to have it also mountgox.com open on your computer. Mm -hmm. You log in to your uh, to your account on the computer and then you launch the app and then it asks you Oh, then you have to activate the app from your account on the computer, mm -hmm. and then it gives you a pairing key, which exactly. is like a barcode. Yeah, you'll either have a QR code or you could enter it manually if, okay. if you wish. Okay, and then when the app asks for this pairing key, then mm -hmm. does it turn on the scanner and it'll actually let me scan it from the screen? And exactly. Oh, that's nice. Okay. <laughs> Good. I, don't, I hope I didn't have to type it in. <laughs> All right, so you can just scan that, that pairing key code, mm -hmm. and it will actually connect and then what's the other what are the, what is the other thing that we had asked you to add? oh yeah so then three, the three yeah so then the secret key it that thing needs to be stored on the phone there's no way to go around unless you right. want to repair every single time right but you don't want to leave the secret key just in plain text vulnerable right yeah so that's why we use um an industry standard encryption algorithm so it's to, stored encrypted on the phone exactly is it i mean is it unencrypted for long enough that that a virus could could grab it um, I don't think so, but like I said before, there's always possibilities as we mm -hmm. continue with this technology and it gets mm -hmm. better and better and better. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, cool. So uh, then the next, what's the next slide there? This represents what? The, the, the login? This is what happens after you pair it. Is that, turn the screen this way so we can see it. Oh, okay. So that screen on the left mm -hmm. is the... Um, screen basically where you'd enter your pin if you'd like to log in and on the bottom right corner of that screen it says change profile so in other words what that implies is that this application actually can pair with multiple accounts on multiple Mt. Gox accounts in case um, mm. you, you need to I guess check multiple accounts. So you could have like a his and a hers uh, you know whatever husband and wife both have two different accounts mm -hmm. and they keep their money separate and then one app could actually connect to either or. Exactly. Or you can have one that's for uh, pocket money and one that's for more checking account Definitely. like level uh, balances mm -hmm. and have even different permissions. Exactly. Like, like you could have one that's for pocket money that is able to spend and receive and all that and make trades or whatever, but then the, the, like a, one that has a larger balance, like a checking balance that only allows deposits or something like exactly. that from your phone. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So then even if, it, even if a virus somehow hacked into this thing, it would still be limited to your, your pocket money account and the other one it could only make deposits. Mm -hmm. That's cool, very cool. All right, next. What's the next slide there? Okay. Okay, so on this screen we're actually showing an example of what the app would look like based on the rights you have set to Mt. Gox. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. For, for example, on, on the left, you'd see all the rights are enabled. So every single option within the application is available. Mm -hmm. and, on the, and on the right, you only have deposit available. So all you can do is redeem the QR codes or voucher codes. So this is an example of two different accounts and how the permissions could be different. Exactly. So that's what we were just saying. So on the right, they, the only thing they can do on that account is make deposits. Exactly. And on the one on the left, you can get info, like what balances and transaction history, things like that. Yeah, everything. Trading, Trade, buying, selling, sending. Deposit, history. make deposits and withdrawals and all that. So one could be pocket money that what you would normally carry around town in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And the other one could be a larger amount um, and uh, only allowed to make deposits. That's cool. That's a nice level of security. What's the next? 
Okay, this one is what? Oh, that's yeah, the so normal, the, the login screen. Exactly. So after you're paired, that's just the login screen you get, right? Exactly. Okay. And what's this? And then now we have the home screen, which shows the open buy and sell orders, as mm -hmm. well as uh, ticker data and your account balance. So, okay, so you see the last high, low, all that. What's VWAP? VWAP. Oh, that's exactly like an averaged uh, um, yeah. purchase price. And then you got this, okay, so sell one Bitcoin for $1,000. So that's your open buy on, and sell orders would be just listed right there. Exactly. Okay, cool. And what's this? This is the, uh, I believe that's buy. the buy screen. Yeah, buy right. Bitcoins, yeah. amount to buy. Pretty self-explanatory. Oh, that's slick, so you can just yeah. buy it right there. In case you're at Mezzy Grill and all you have is cash and you need Bitcoin. Exactly. Okay. And the next one And then the is sell screen. Sell. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory as well. Same idea. Are there any limits on this? I mean, like minimums or maximums that you could do from the app? So as of right now, there are no limits, but <clears throat> that may change in the future. Okay. Cool. What's next? Let's okay, see. so this is the send screen. And what you can do from here is either A, choose to send to a Bitcoin address, B, you can send to a btc.to address, mm -hmm. or C, you can actually scan a Bitcoin QR code, which um, follows the same standard that all the uh, other Android applications use as well for the Bitcoin QR codes, so they can have you know, the amount encoded in it as well. Okay, so if you scan it, it could just be just a Bitcoin address, or it could be HTTP, or no, Bitcoin colon address. Um, this is a scanner, is this integrated to a scanner app? Yes, it's, it's using the uh, barcode scanner that actually you recommended quite a while back. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, I have a little piece in this. <laughs> and then you can also put in a BTCTO. So if I have BTCTO and I just type in one, then it's gonna go to that address that we did earlier. Mm -hmm, exactly. Just one by itself, wow, yeah. that's amazing. Now, you can only send it to a Bitcoin address though, right? Not to another account holder. No. Okay. Not this way. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So, what's next? Okay, yes. so this is what I, I believe that is very interesting. It's the voucher, voucher system, yeah. and what it allows you to do is create redeemable voucher codes in the currency which you choose, whether that's in Bitcoins or in U.S. dollars. And subsequently, when you have these voucher codes, which exist as either a code like MTGOX dash BTC dash a bunch of random mm -hmm. you know letters and numbers, or it could be a QR code. Mm -hmm. And so when it's a QR code, you can actually use the redeem function, scan the QR code, and instantly you've redeemed the amount of that voucher into your account. Okay, yeah, this is where it gets interesting. Because yeah. when I learned about this, I was like really excited. This is so, so cool. Because you can, so <laughs> you can basically create your own, almost like a, like a, almost like a gift certificate or a check exactly. or something. Yeah. And you can you could do it in denominated in U.S. dollars or Bitcoin, either one, and you put in the value like 100, and then you pick whether it's 100 dollars or 100 Bitcoin, and then you click create voucher. And when you've created a voucher, you're going to get a QR code, and then and also another like a textual version of it. Exactly. Right? Okay. Now with what what can what things or methods are built into this thing to share it? Like, <clears throat> can you use the Android like menu share and, and email that code? And oh, so as of right now, we don't have anything um, available to allow you to share aside from either you know being face to face with each other, All obviously, right. or mm -hmm. or you could I guess send the QR or not the QR the voucher code, but um, I mean it? unless you're using some kind of uh, you know encryption on your email, I wouldn't because. It's, you know oh, what I mean? right. It has yeah. its own value. It has value. Exactly. It's almost like, um, yeah, it's almost like a credit card number or something. But it has actual value. So mm -hmm. anybody who has, gets a hold of that code can exactly. redeem it. Yeah. So. As, actually, as a kind of a tease, a while back, Mark had put a, uh, a real live Q, um, <laughs> voucher code, code yeah, on, on his Twitter. Oh. And, <laughs> so, I mean. <laughs> First one to grab it, yeah. grab it. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. how, much, how many Bitcoins was that worth? Uh, I think it was just one. Oh, yeah. so that was like worth good four dollars. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. So, in practical use, I mean, if we're at lunch and I w and I owe you twenty bucks, I can put in twenty dollars, boom, voucher, and then you can just say exactly. scan, scan, beep, and I just sent you twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. Wow. Or <laughs> this is like a whole new currency. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like we call, talk about Mount Gox USD. 
Exactly. There's USD and then there's Mt. Gox USD. Mm -hmm. And so literally we can send each other dollars and if I send you $100, it's always going to be $100 mm -hmm. and it's regardless of currency fluctuations, right? Or I can say uh, 20 Bitcoin beep, and you just receive it immediately. And it goes from my Mt. Gox account to your Mt. Gox account, of course. You have to have a Mt. Gox account, mm -hmm. obviously, to have this app. And all right, so you don't recommend emailing these. So, um, I mean, like I said, everybody has their secure. own security set up, mm -hmm. and so they know what they're dealing with. But if, you, if you're if you not, you know, comfortable yeah. or confident that your email is not going to be eavesdrop or yeah. whatnot. I suppose if it's sort of a trivial amount, then it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Yeah. And it, in the actual textual version, is it a URL that they could actually click to redeem? Uh, or it's just a number that they have to go into their account and say, redeem voucher, and paste it in the box. Yeah, it's kind of like... Um, uh, people who are familiar with like World of Warcraft, they have mm -hmm. game time cards, right? Mm -hmm. That are specific codes. It's mm -hmm. kind of like that. Okay. Yeah. So to like if so, so somebody re uh, sent me this in an email. Mm -hmm. I would. I, I w It's not just something I click. I actually have to go to my Mt. Gox account and say redeem voucher and paste in the number. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Well, <laughs> we're like there's so much to talk about. We're just getting started, <laughs> but we got to take a break really quick because we got to thank our sponsors. And you know who they are, <laughs> the, uh, the same sponsors that we've had since the beginning, Mezzy Grill, um, M-E-Z-E Grill.com, Mezzy Grill obviously is uh, the world's first brick and mortar restaurant to our knowledge that accepts Bitcoin. And not only do they accept Bitcoin, but they now buy and sell Bitcoin for cash anytime you're in New York City. Um, the, but that's not the only reason to go there. They have Mediterranean food that is absolutely delicious and healthy. It's one of Ed and I's favorite restaurants. We've been going there uh, ever since we moved to the neighborhood. And um, that's how we met Marwan, the owner, and, and became friends and talked to him about Bitcoin and the, the rest is history. Now he's Bitcoin famous. <laughs> and, uh, but the food is absolutely delicious and it's even Dr. Frugal approved It's in the sense that it's so affordable. It's hard to find a, an affordable place to eat if you're in Manhattan. Um, but it's really, really uh, delicious, healthy, and affordable. It's like three blocks south of Columbus Circle. So if you're ever in New York City, if you live here, or you know, who doesn't either live here or travel through New York sooner or later, do not leave the city without trying Mezzy Grill. They're open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, they're just awesome. Ask for Marwan. Thank him for supporting Bitcoin. And, and you know, yes, he did have uh, Bitcoin. Mezzy Grill's Bitcoin was in mybitcoin.com. And yes, they did lose it. Fortunately, he had you know cleared it out, and there wasn't that much there. But um, uh, it's because you know I set him up with it. So of course, um, all my friends and family, who, uh, almost all of my friends and family, were affected. But that has not dissuaded uh, his enthusiasm for Bitcoin. He's smart. He knows that that has nothing to do with Bitcoin itself. And so uh, he's more of an evangelist for Bitcoin than ever. Very excited and very supportive and he supports the Bitcoin show and only one TV. So be sure and um, you know, email him, call him, and go in and visit them and ask for Marwan and thank him for his support of the Bitcoin show, bringing us to you every day. And who else? Mt. Gox, you've heard of them, right? MTGOX.com, uh, the number one exchange site, the number one way to buy and sell Bitcoins online. They, um, they have obviously the vast majority of market share. They're the oldest exchange site to my knowledge, that exists online, and um, they are extremely resilient. They have been hacked. It's not news. Um, we all know about that. But um, they no no account holder lost any Bitcoin in this, um, except for Mt. Gox themselves lost a small amount, which they they covered, of course. But um, that's the good news. Nobody lost any money in Mt. In Mt. Gox's back. More secure than ever, and um, resilient. They're in it for the long run. They're trusted and they're profitable. I mean, that's a, that's a huge thing. The fact that they're profitable means that they have no incentive to run away. They're here for the long haul. So we thank them for uh, supporting Only One TV and The Bitcoin Show. And obviously our guest today is from Mt. Gox. Um, and BitPay. They call it BitPay. I call it bit-pay.com. BitPay is the new way to automate your uh, uh, shopping cart uh, so that no matter what kind of website you have, whether you have nothing but just like a little blog or absolutely any kind of website, they have their own shopping cart built in. And if you're more sophisticated and you already have a shopping cart on your site, 
theirs integrates totally right into yours. And what it is, it's kind of like, um, I think of it like as a PayPal checkout or a Google checkout for Bitcoin. So it's a, it's a shopping cart or shopping cart integration, either one, that you have two options when you set up an account. It's so easy, I did it on the air in one of the episodes that even I could do it like in two seconds. It's unbelievably easy. It's just a little widget you paste in and boom, you have a shopping cart. And um, it, the shopping cart accepts only Bitcoin. So if you, you have to use it, you know, you have a different button mm -hmm. if you want to use PayPal or something else, that's, that's that business. But if you want Bitcoin, there's a button that says pay with Bitcoin and it takes you specifically to a Bitcoin shopping cart. They can check out by sending Bitcoin to you and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's so, so simple. Uh, so we thank BitPay, bit-pay.com is their site. And Allison is the lovely lady in the picture there. She's in the demo video. If you go to BitPay, uh, bit-pay.com, you'll see Allison. And she's going to be here actually. <laughs> Um, and so you'll be able to ask her all kinds of questions. She's going to be here for the Bitcoin conference. Um, a little plug for that. The Bitcoin conference is coming up really, really soon, August 19th to 21st. Uh, but Allison will be here. You'll meet the, this lovely lady who will tell you all about BitPay. <laughs> so she's um, the uh, uh, spokesperson for BitPay. So again, we thank them. And BitPay, of course, is the official uh, shopping cart for the Bitcoin conference. Speaking of the Bitcoin conference, before we get back into this, uh, like I said, it's coming up really fast. And um, I know that, I know how many people have registered and I know how many tables we've sold, but I also know that like at least 60 people have told me that they are definitely coming and have not registered yet. Mm -hmm. Because you know why? Bitcoin people are busy. I mean, some of the people who are in the middle of this Bitcoin world are the busiest people I know. And, and they don't even know what's going on in the Bitcoin world because they're so into it. It's like doctors who have no time to read medical journals. They're just so busy practicing medicine. Um, Bitcoin people are like that. So they're very, very, very busy and they haven't had time to register for the conference. But um, make time, it's really, really quick. Just go to bitcoinconference.com. And actually, I think you have to do it all lowercase, bitcoinconference.com. To, uh, to get to the website and then click register now. And literally you're gonna see the little button that's actually behind, under the hood, it's bit-pay.com. But it, you, you check out and you can buy um, an admission or however many admission tickets you want. And uh, it's, it's value. Actually we had to change it to value it in US dollars because the value of Bitcoin was plummeting at the moment. But uh, we made it 26 US dollars value worth of Bitcoin. Uh, for admission per person, which you know that's like that's you know less than it costs to go to the movies or have a cheeseburger in Manhattan, and 130 U.S. dollars for a vendor table. We have um, now because I know how many people are coming. And I mean, I am getting calls constantly, and literally, people are flying here from Central South America, Australia, Africa, England, Europe, all over the United States, Canada, everywhere. People are coming from all over the globe for this thing. It's going to be a massive event. Um, and uh, I know how many people have, have said for sure they're going to be here. And, uh, one group is actually chartering a private jet, I won't say who, but um, it's going to be interesting. So the, um, what we had to do is we figured out that there's no way we could possibly host it at the studio. We're going to do uh, some pre-conference fun and festivities here in town before it starts like on Thursday, the 18th. And then Friday, it'll start officially, and that'll be here at the, at the Only One TV studios, and we'll actually tape a show, and we'll do tours of the studio and all that, and then we'll do um, like an after thing at Hudson Eatery, which is the second restaurant in Manhattan that accepts Bitcoin, and we'll do uh, like, a, like an icebreaker social thing, whatever, named Hello My Name Is, whatever. Yeah. It'll be fun. And then, uh, you know, people will probably get boozy and tell you all kinds of secrets. It'll be fun. And then, uh, and the biggest names in Bitcoin, and I mean some serious technocrats from all over the world are, are like, you know, we want to bring this to our economy of our country. I mean, you're, you're gonna, it's going to blow your mind who's going to be here. So um, don't miss this. Don't miss it. Okay. Then, uh, for Saturday is the big day. We've got some amazing keynote speakers. Um, I'm just going to say, I mean, Gavin Andresen for sure. And... Um, Stefan Thomas, for sure. And we've got several others that aren't absolutely confirmed yet, but uh, they will be soon. And so I'm updating the schedule probably later today. But uh, Gavin Andresen and Stefan Thomas, for sure, and some, several others. 
but we have so many people that are coming, I know for sure, that we decided we have to have a real, uh, a, a much larger venue. So we've mo you'll see on the schedule, we've moved the venue for the Saturday thing to the Roosevelt Hotel, the Vanderbilt Hall, and it's gonna be massive. The, the, uh, the actual, uh, what do you call it, Audi like, uh, auditorium, or what do you call it, like theater seating. We'll seat 200 people, wow. and we'll have like 12, six foot tape vendor tables like it's gonna be really spacious people are gonna be very very happy um whether they bought a table they're gonna definitely get their money's worth i was worried about it here in the studio like it's manhattan we have very we have limited space but there it's gonna be really really nice first class and um seating it's gonna be awesome and actually they have really reasonable room rates we, we didn't negotiate a, a deal because they want me to guarantee the you know i was like nah but actually, Ed, Dr. Frugal found out that he can get, you can, I think you can get rooms there over this period for like 200 <coughs> to 220, something like that. So it's actually very, very affordable. You can you know, stay at the same hotel where we'll be. So that's going to be really fun. And then Sunday morning, we'll, we'll be here again. And of course, we'll be having breakfast at Oak Crepe. And you'll see on the schedule, we kind of outlined it. Lunches at Mezzi Grill, dinners and cocktails at Hudson Eatery. But it's going to be a blast. So again, that's August 19th to 21st, which means <coughs> we'll actually be uh, doing the pre thing on Thursday the 18th, and then uh, all the way through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we'll even do post-conference fun and festivities on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, so it's gonna be a blast. So, okay, so back to the, the app. Um, where did we leave off? Did we get through all those slides of it? We'll go to the next one, let's see. What is this? Oh, yeah, so it looks about? like it's still the voucher screen on, okay. on there. That's the voucher screen. That's the creative voucher. Right, right. Okay, you got US dollars. Go to, go to the next one. And then, so creating a voucher is basically just saying, anybody who gets this number, this number is worth money. And they can redeem it. Exactly. And of course, the, my first question, I already know the answer now, but my first question was, whoa, what if I create a voucher and it never gets redeemed? So the, then it'll just remain in your history until it is redeemed. So you'll see, in my history, it'll show whether it was redeemed or not? Um, I'm not exactly sure if it actually shows whether it was redeemed or not mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the creator side. Mm -hmm. It does definitely on the, um, on the redeemer side. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if, and, if I, um, so, and if it doesn't ever get redeemed, then I can just redeem it myself and it puts it right back into my exactly. account. Exactly. So like if I ever wanted to, would this work if I just go through all the vouchers I've created and redeem them all, redeem them all? It'll go mm. failed, 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 bing, redeemed one. Exactly. Would it do that? So I, occasionally I could just redeem all of the ones I've issued if I know mm. I don't have any outstanding and grab them all back. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that works. And then, and this, okay, so this is in the app and this is a redeem voucher. Okay, so again, if we're at lunch and I owe you two Bitcoins, I can just put in two Bitcoin create voucher and you just hit redeem voucher yeah i would just basically hit that button which is a circle for scanning the qr mm -hmm. i'd go up to your phone go like this mm -hmm. it would go beep and then it's done and it's in your and it's immediately in your mount gox account mm -hmm. cool this is so cool all right what's the next one okay so this is the uh depth table which is exactly the same market depth that you see on the website but obviously uh, some of the records were um truncated so that since it's a mobile app and you probably don't need to see the bottom and most mm -hmm. top orders. Oh, so this is just the middle. Exactly. Saying. Okay, truncated at the top and the bottom, but it shows you the spread and the, the highest bids and the lowest asks. No. The Yeah, that's right. The highest bids and the lowest asks. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And then, all right, I see, I see. Okay. And then... Um, and finally, that's the... Uh, where this all came from, Mount Gox Live, it's an actual view of Mount Gox Live on your phone. So ah. you can always, no matter where you are, stay up to date with everything that's happening. And again, these are, this is just a, a kind of like a market depth table which shows the, the bids on the left and the asks on the exactly. right. Exactly. Bids on the left, asks on the right, and there's, if there's a gap in the middle, that's the spread, right? Mm -hmm. How come it doesn't show the green squiggly thing in the middle, the actual trades? Um, does it? It should. I'm not sure if it's uh, visible maybe on the screen oh, or in okay. that screenshot, but it, it does. In the app, the it does show you. Yeah, okay. definitely. And the, green, and the squiggly green thing, again, that's the actual trades that did happen. Exactly. Okay. 
That's it? Okay, that's all the images, all right. And then, yeah, go, yeah, there we go. That's the actual Malcox, mtgoxlive.com website. Yes. So that's what it would look like. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the website, which you can go there, and that's actually, like, what is that, like Ajax or something? It's running continuously, right? Oh, yeah, Real so time? Um, Coder had built this on the uh, new WebSocket protocol, which, mm -hmm. I mean, people can read about that on Wikipedia if they'd like to know more, but mm -hmm. what happened was, it was, um, supported on Google Chrome. It also works on Firefox, but it's not enabled by default. So what happened was, you know, we'd have people come in occasionally and say, hey, it's not working on my web browser. Mm -hmm. So what he did then was he added IAC support as well. So What support? IAC? Actually, I'm not sure how to pronounce it oh, correctly. Okay. Yeah, Ajax, IAX. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, um, so now it works across pretty much any modern browser, whether you have WebSocket support or not. Mm, cool, cool, cool. That is very slick. Yeah, is that gonna, be, I mean, oh yeah, that is. I was just gonna ask you, and I already know. I was gonna say, is that gonna be integrated into Mt. Gox website? And then I, mm -hmm. wait a minute, it is, because yeah, exactly. I went there, and I clicked it, and I was like, oh, <laughs> it takes you there now. How long has that been integrated there? Um, I believe it's been there for at least a week. Oh, okay, oh, how did I, I just noticed. A whole <laughs> week went by, that's like a year in internet, in uh, Bitcoin time, right? All right, so what, what's on the roadmap for this uh, Mt. Gox Mobile? What's the future hold? I mean, you already solved every problem pretty much that there is. Yeah, I so mean... So what's left? I mean, there will always be... No, actually, no. There's not going to be any new crazy problems, but like, like we all know, you know, we always have to adapt to the environment and the situation. Mm -hmm. um, but as of right now, what we want to do is focus on having more users actually understand and use the application mm -hmm. to its fullest potential so that, Educating you know, the users. exactly. So, mm -hmm. so we can actually make Bitcoins really spread out and, yeah. you know, be adopted into the real world. Speaking of that, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that occurred to me is this voucher system, like literally, can I, can I create, no, I'm trying to say, if I've never heard of Bitcoin, I've never heard mm -hmm. of Mt. Gox, can I install the app on my Android phone and create an, a new account with the app or no? Oh, no, you'd, you'd still have to have a um, website okay. or a, a computer to access the website in order to pair the account. So it has mm. to be created first on the laptop or computer. Mm, can I trick it? Can I, can I use my browser on my phone to create a Mt. Gox account mm -hmm. and then pair it to my app on my phone? Oh, yeah, you, you could definitely do that. Okay, because yeah. it's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I can, I, like, if I'm, I, okay, I met Cindy Lou. She's never heard of any of this. Mm -hmm. We're having lunch and all, Bitcoin, 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 right? And then she goes, oh, okay, I want to do some Bitcoin. So I say, okay, take out your Android phone. And she goes to mtgox.com, click sign up. She puts in her name and her password, hopefully a secure. We'll teach her about long, secure passwords. That'll be a whole nother lunch. And then um, email, right? And then boom, you have an account. Exactly. So now she can install the app and mm -hmm. she could actually pair it by going back and forth between the browser and the app. Yeah. Okay. If, I mean, it's a little more difficult, you know, you'd have to rely on co copy paste, but yeah, yeah, well, you can do that. <laughs> Android is pretty easy. Just hold down the home screen, people. You hold down the home, not the home screen, the home key. You, have you know that? You oh, hold, I didn't know. You didn't know that. Oh, look. <laughs> you hold down the home key and it shows you every app that's running. So I can oh, go yeah. bounce back and forth between mm -hmm. my, my uh, app and my browser anytime I want. Well, anyway, so she does that and pairs it up, sets it up. Now that's it. That's all she mm -hmm. needs, right? Because then I can create a voucher and she can get, she says, I want to buy 20, bu 20 bucks worth of Bitcoin because it went from $5 the other day. Now it's 10 and it's on its way up, back up. So up, 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 right? <laughs> so uh, she goes, here's 20 bucks. I want to get some Bitcoins. So she gives me 20 bucks. I say, okay, here's a $20 vouch. And this is also brilliant because I can do it without, I don't have to buy the Bitcoins for her. Exactly. We don't have to negotiate the price or anything. It's like you buy it whenever you want to buy it. You think it'll go down by tomorrow? Wait, you know, whatever. So I can actually say 20 US dollars, boom, voucher, create voucher. And then I get a QR code and she just does, does receive voucher and she scans it and it goes beep. And now she's got 20 US dollars in her Mt. Gox account. That means everybody is a trader. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a trader. Exactly. You don't need to go to a website to find the nearest trader because like everybody's a trader. <laughs> oh my God, this, is, this changes everything. So um, that's what we're talking about. You know, like I, I've been saying, that the biggest issues, obviously, with Bitcoin, number one, security. 
and we're, we're addressing that with the YubiKey. YubiKey is like phenomenal. And, uh, you know, and this syncing it to the app with certain specific rights only mm -hmm. uh, addresses security. And the second is liquidity. Liquidity, this, this really, really helps because every little kid in junior high can be a Bitcoin dealer. I mean, they can all be selling Bitcoins <laughs> to each other and, and showing their parents, look, I made 700% interest on my investment <laughs> in six weeks. You know, and the dad's like, what? <laughs> Let me see that little game you're playing. And, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, what's the third one? Oh, I always forget one of them. <laughs> it's, uh, I always say the big, biggest challenges are security, liquidity, and I forgot the third one, but anyway, you guys will remind me. Um, so where were we? Um, okay, so now she's got Bitcoins in her account and she mm -hmm. can buy them whatever, and she can actually buy them from her phone. Exactly. Wow. That's really slick. That's slick. But yeah, the users ha are going to have to be educated in how to configure the app mm -hmm. um, because they have to, when they do it, they have to select what rights they're going to give themselves on the app side and then they're going to get a key, which is a long string, whatever, and then they have to put it into the app. So there's a couple little steps, mm -hmm. but uh, a technology, you know, friend or nephew or niece or whatever could actually set it up for, for people. And once it's set up, it's... All they have is the app and a, a PIN number, right? Exactly. And that's it. And then they're good to go. And they can literally have one for checking, one for, or one for pocket money, one for checking, I guess you could say, yeah. levels. And, uh, or one for mom, one for dad, one for uncle, whatever. Oh, they could even, couldn't they, like, um, if, if my friend, uh, say Joe, right? If Joe has his Malgox account on there, he also has his mom's on there and his sisters and his uncle Lou's all on his app. So he can manage all of theirs. Exactly. And he, yeah. could, he could even transfer money from one to the other by creating a voucher and then redeeming it on the other one? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. So that means everybody can be a little banker for their family. So the little tech geek has the app, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like 12 years old and he's the, bankers, the, the family's banker. He can actually manage everybody else's Bitcoin accounts on his phone if, if, if he wants to set it up that way, exactly. if they want to agree to do that. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Very sophisticated. So there, so there's really, I mean, are there any, um, any ideas that you have or predictions that you have for what, what's going to be in the future for these types of mobile um, apps? Well, you know, we're trying to make it easier for merchants to be able to do business with Bitcoins, mm -hmm. you know, and Obviously, there's many solutions that are coming up online, but you know, in order to, for Bitcoins to really take hold, we need to take that brick and mortar marketplace. Mm -hmm. You know, Bitcoins exactly. need to get in there. Absolutely. So, you know, another thing we, we were kind of discussing a little earlier about the rights is, you know, since you can pair up and set the uh, rights to only be deposit only, right. then if you have, for instance, a restaurant and you have multiple employees, you don't want them to see your balance. You don't want them to be able to trade your coins. You don't want them to be able to withdraw your coins, obviously. Right. But depositing, yeah, deposit as much as you want. That's right. <laughs> we talked about this before in the conference room earlier, and you were explaining to me that if I have an, uh, if I'm a business, I'm a retail mm -hmm. business, um, I can set up my Mt. Gox merchant account uh, for multiple. I could have like eight different phones mm -hmm. keyed to it, and uh, seven of them are deposit only. Exactly. So every clerk who has a phone mm -hmm. could be set up on my account, but for deposit only. Exactly. So they could all be walking, like every waiter in a restaurant, every mm -hmm. waiter or waitress in a restaurant could just be set up. Oh, I got to talk to Hudson Eatery about this. And yeah. Messy Grill. Like literally, the, the servers could come to your table. And, and here's the bill, and you say, I'd like to pay with Bitcoin. Instead mm -hmm. of putting, instead of sticking the American Express in there, they say, I'd like to pay with Bitcoin. And the, the server pulls out of their pocket and says, okay, and then they can literally just um, redeem, receive a redeem code. Exactly, they just scan beep, whatever you... And make a deposit yeah. right mm -hmm. into it. Yeah. Only with deposits though, no withdrawals or transfers or buys or sells, just deposits. Exactly. But they would, of course, the person, uh, the customer would have to have a Mt. Gox account, Yes, the, the, the there, customer right? would have to have a Mt. Gox account with, with the withdrawal right as well. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Which they would for their pocket money or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, if they don't have a Mt. Gox account, the customer could still send it to a Bitcoin address. And maybe the server could verify. Could they see the transaction if they had rights for the information? Um, yeah, you'd have to have the get info right. The get info right. Yeah. So the server would have to have the ability to make deposits and the mm -hmm. get info if they wanted to verify uh, network 
deposits that didn't go through exactly. Mt. Gox. But obviously there's, you know, the six the confirmations. Delay. Yeah. Six? So does, does Mt. Gox require six confirmations? That's, before that's what up? I last heard. Um, oh, okay. I mean, don't, don't quote yeah, me definitely okay, on this, okay, I okay. guess. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, then there's a, that's, that six is a long delay. Mm -hmm. Two, that that may minutes. be wrong. If that sounds big to you, then I, I'm definitely mistaken. Mm, I'm not sure, but it's, yeah. I know that it's like, um, well, no, it could be, but mm -hmm. like, uh, I think it's approximately like one confirmation for 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. six would be like an hour. Oh. That would be too much probably for a restaurant. But if it would, I mean, for the time wise would be a problem. But if it were, you know, 20 minutes, if it's a sit down restaurant, that would probably could still be acceptable as long as they pay but when they order yeah. <laughs> by the time they're finished that's paid interesting interesting and I'm sure there are a point of sale system I mean Mark actually uh, Mark Carpelles is that how you say his name <laughs> it's French um, he's been on our show of course a couple times and he's been on the French language Bitcoin show called Le Bitcoin show and uh, which of course he speaks fluent French because he's French <laughs> so he was very verbose on that show and he actually held up the, buy, the box, this point of sale device that is uh, apparently beta testing now or will be beta testing soon and stuff like that. I can't wait to get my hands on that. And do uh, you have any secrets about how that's going to work? Like, is that going to work with the app? Uh, of oh, course it'll work with the yeah, app, right? Definitely. Duh. So <laughs> that'll be, but that, that'll somehow tie them in so that, I don't know, what, what is it going to do? Um, so I can't really get into too much detail right now. Oh, you can but, tell me. But what I, I can what, what I can say is that everything's going to be changing soon. <laughs> Come on, you sound like me, jeez. That's what I say every day. I can't tell you, but it's big, 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 and it's going to change everything, right? That's yeah. it. That's all you're going to give me. Okay, I'm calling Mark. All right. <laughs> but anyway, we, we're going to have that soon, I guess, where mm -hmm. we will play around and beta test it. Maybe I'll take it over to Mezzi Grill and see what we can do. We'll play around with it. That'll be cool. So what the future holds. So what do you see happening? Okay, so aside from all the apps and Mt. Gox and everything else, let's just talk about Bitcoin in general. Okay. What's your prediction? I ask everybody this. What's your prediction of, um, like, what, what will the future, like the near term, let's say six months from now, mm -hmm. And uh, what will Bitcoin and the look like in the world? And uh, say two years from now, what will Bitcoin look like in the world? What do you think? And what will be the value, um, the value of Bitcoin too? I can tell you that as long as we don't find any uh, issues with the system itself, and then as long as there's people like you, me, and everybody else who are pushing this with our strongest of efforts, then there's no way this movement's going to stop ever. And so one year from now, I mean, I can't even predict, but things are going to be exponentially larger than they are now. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not pushing Bitcoin. Not <laughs> at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> you must be thinking of someone else. <laughs> no, um, but okay. So, and it, yeah, and I mean, I, I've always been a, you know, everyone tell, says I'm a, I'm a the, you know, Bitcoin's biggest cheerleader or whatever evangelist. <laughs> and then now after these recent experiences, you know, we all know. Um, I'm going to be uh, not only, you know, I'm going to be all about uh, security, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be Definitely. the biggest. I'm going to be an advocate for security first, Bitcoin second, you mm -hmm. know, because it's money. It really is money. And we have to protect it from uh, all those bad guys who are stealing it, which is, you know, it's like, anyway, we'll talk about that as a whole <laughs> other thing. But, you know, it's kind of like the wild, wild west days <laughs> at the moment. So, um, so you see, do you really see it um, being, oh, I knew what I was going to say. With the app and point of sale being accept, accepted as um, you know merchants, mm -hmm. um, wouldn't it be more convenient for a merchant to just accept Mt. Gox U.S. dollars? Because if they need twelve dollars and fifty cents, they get twelve dollars and fifty cents, mm -hmm. and then they don't even have to deal with Bitcoin at all. It's almost like Mt. Gox U.S. dollars could be an alternative currency. Yeah. It. Um I, what I would say is the Mt. Gox USD almost acts as a crutch or a, you know what I mean? It almost mm -hmm. helps stores and merchants adopt mm -hmm. and move into Bitcoins. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. It's because not you're just can, going Bitcoin only. Right. Yeah. So they can make the decision. They have all the freedom in the world if they want to buy Bitcoin, you know, as an investment or not, if they want to take all their receipts and put it into Bitcoin form, uh, hoping that it will go up in value. Or if they want to 
you know, a lot of people are thinking, I mean, thinking that mer the a strategy of a big, uh, merchant accepting Bitcoin and immediately selling it to put it into dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you have Mt. Gox, these mobile on both ends, you can actually just send U.S. dollars to U.S. dollars. And you don't even have to put it in Bitcoin at all. Exactly. But it makes it really, really convenient if you want to. Like if the customer has Bitcoins, he wants to... Uh, you know, he can either send bitcoins or he can even sell some into U.S. dollars and have some U.S. dollars on there too. The merchant can accept bitcoin or the merchant can accept dollars. Mm -hmm. And then they can, the merchant can, ex can convert everything into bitcoins mm -hmm. or convert all the bitcoins into dollars yeah. or, or even whatever percentage they want. So they have a lot of flexibility that way. Yeah, and actually, you know, on this same topic, I, I don't know how, this, how I forgot this, but we're actually going to be having additional currencies as well, not just U.S. dollars. You mean you mean like euros and exactly on the yeah. app too? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. wow! Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. There's no end to that. Okay, we're out of time. He's telling me we got two minutes. Can you believe it? Time just flies <laughs> when you're having fun. We start talking about Bitcoin, and it seems like 50 minutes seems like five minutes. It's crazy. <laughs> But um, thanks so much for joining us no, today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Thanks, guys, for, for hanging in there with us. Um, every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern, typically, is our schedule. Sometimes we um, do uh, pre-taped shows, and sometimes we do bonus shows and do more than one in a day. But normally, 2 p.m. Eastern, every day, Monday through Friday, The Bitcoin Show. Thanks for joining us. And 4 p.m. on Wednesdays, Eastern Time, for El Show de Bitcoin en Español. And we're adding seven more languages. Anyway, till tomorrow, thanks for joining us on The Bitcoin Show. Take care. Up, up, up. Thank you.